It hasn't even been a month since Splatoon 3 dropped, and without a doubt, Samurun has been much more insanely fun, but also insanely hard, and today I'd like to give you guys some tips that I find myself using just to make the mode a little bit less stressful. If you enjoy the content and want to see more from me, be sure to like and subscribe, and let's just start with number one. First off, before the start of every wave, it is highly recommended to paint as much as you can. Splatoon is a mobility-based shooter, and it is never a bad idea to take advantage of the time you have before a wave starts. Also, don't forget about walls, since they can give you alternate escape escape options to escape death or for delivering eggs just a little bit faster. For number two, don't hesitate to use bombs to revive your teammates, especially if you have a shorter range weapon, it is a quick long range tool you can use to save people. This especially comes in handy as a last ditch effort when you're the last player left alive and your team is too far away. For number three, before any wave starts, there's a green wavy silhouette at the bottom of your screen that'll tell you what water level the tide will be. If it moves lower, it means it'll be low tide, and if it moves much higher, then it'll be high tide. You have no idea how many times I've seen people drown themselves because they didn't know about the water level when it's right there on the screen for you, and I'll admit for a while I didn't know about this either. This will give you a really good head start for what to expect. Number 4. Since Splatoon 2, the best way to get the most amount of eggs as possible is baiting and luring bosses closer to the basket. Obviously you can't do this for every boss, but if you have a scrapper or moz coming towards you, rather than killing it immediately, try bringing it next to the basket before finishing it off. It is a much quicker and easier way of getting those 3 eggs in. Also a little side note for moz, once it goes back into the ground, it'll chase the closest player so you can manipulate it to lure it to the basket much easier. Number 5. Really take advantage of throwing eggs towards the basket, especially if they're near to shore so you can reach your quota much faster. You can also throw them up to higher ground to pick them up a little later, or just coordinate passes with your teammates. I sometimes also like to juggle eggs by throwing one to the basket while picking one up at the same time, and it's much faster than just going back and forth. Number 6. Although it looks weird, you can throw eggs through salmonids and bosses into the basket, so try not to let them stop you from completing the objective. Number 7. The cannons that are used by the big shot can also be used to fire eggs near the basket. You should always take advantage of this and even kill other bosses near it to get to your quota much faster. Number 8. The lifesaver on your back shows how much ink you have left in your tank, so be sure to glance at it every now and then to help keep track of it. For number 9, I know it can be hard for some people to consistently kill moths, but what I do is wait until the very last moment for it to pop up before tossing a bomb into its mouth. It takes a lot of practice, but trust me, it'll become much easier with time and is much quicker for killing it, especially if your weapon doesn't do a lot of damage. Moving on to number 10, after you shoot a scrapper, it'll pause and keep facing you, so with a teammate you can force it to turn its back towards them for a much easier kill. For number 11, whenever a drizzler jumps, it is extremely exposed, so you can use it to your advantage and do lots of damage to it before it even lands. Number 12, a drizzler will deploy projectiles that'll turn into ink storms if you don't shoot it down fast enough. Whenever possible, try and get into a position where you can shoot it back at the drizzler for an easy one shot. If you're in a difficult spot where you can't do this, try and shoot it down anyway, it'll make life so much easier and you can use it to deal damage to other salmonids too. Number 13. If you're the closest player to the Drizzler after it lands, it'll aim its Inkstorm projectile at you, so you can manipulate this to keep the rain away from your team and the basket to make things a little bit easier. In this clip, I forced the rain to go out into the water before killing the Drizzler, so it was just something we didn't have to worry about. Number 14. Blasters are great at taking down the fish stick, and with a carefully timed shot, can even destroy it before it drills into the ground. Number 15. Keep in mind that the Stinger will always attack the player furthest away from it, and that blasters are also amazing for dealing with them too. You can also use crap tank to take out its pots, which is kind of funny. Number 16. Explosher is one of the best and unique main weapons in Salmon Run. Its shots work just like bombs and are capable of taking out flyfish and mudmouths with ease. It also works great against stingers, you can use its 90 damage combo on slamming lids, and you can even aim its shots on top of the mothership for some easy eggs. Number 17. The Grisco Stringer is also an insanely good weapon that deals a whopping 999.9 damage, making it able to take out Drizzlers, Maws, and even Big Shots with just a single shot. You can also attempt fall off on slamming Lids and Steel Heads, which are so satisfying to pull off. Number 18, you can use a slamming Lid to take out Salmonids and even other bosses for some quick and easy golden eggs. It can be very rewarding if you lure a bunch of bosses to get completely wiped out all at the same time. Number 19, if you don't attack the slamming Lid while standing on top of it for some time, it'll use a soup ladle and smack you right off of it. Number 20, this is easier to pull off during high tide, but you can take out a Steel Eel before it fully gets out of the water if you shoot its weak spot while it pokes out. This can save you a little bit of time. Number 21, some weapons like Hydra and E-Leader are capable of taking out a flipper flopper before it goes back into the ground, so sometimes killing it that way can be a little bit faster. Number 22, cannons are extremely powerful at taking out various bosses in just one shot and can even kill fly fish just like how you would with bombs. Just be sure to aim precisely. Number 23, during Kohawk charge, if your weapon is the weakest or slowest compared to others at taking out Kohawks, it's best if you have priority 
priority using a cannon. Personally, I believe weapons like YouTuber, Undercover Burla, Rapid Blasters, and Slosher should always take a cannon. Number 24. During the rush mode, to make things a little bit easier, if you have glowflies on you, you can cling to a wall while your teammates take out and collect eggs from the rushing salmonids that can't touch you. It's certainly not easy, but with enough coordination, you should be able to pull through. Also, keep in mind that after being on the wall for too long, the salmonids will start jumping up at you, so everyone else has to be quick to take them out. Number 25. During Tornado, try your best to form an assembly line of tossing eggs from the shore all the way over to the basket. Weapons with the highest DPS should prioritize taking out any salmonids that drop in from the sky. Number 26. In the mode Goldie Seeking, pay attention to the gushers that don't have the Goldie inside of it. The higher they rise, the closer you are to finding it, so if you find a gusher that flows much lower, then any gusher near it definitely won't have the Goldie inside. Number 27. It's usually best to use specials whenever you need to quickly kill multiple bosses in a short amount of time, simply surviving, or as a longer range option for saving teammates that you can't reach with your main weapon. Really be sure to use them wisely since you only have two uses for all three waves. For number 28, Inkjet is the perfect example of a special that can perform everything that was said previously and is a great way of taking out Flyfish as quickly as possible. For number 29, Wavebreaker is easily one of the best specials for reviving your teammates. Its waves can really come in handy, especially if you feel like you're about to be killed. For number 30, at the end of wave 3, you can tell if you're about to be kindly greeted by the King Salmonid based on the tone of the clear music. It'll sound way more distorted and unsettling than the normal one. For number 31, the King Salmonid waves can be very challenging, especially in Freelance where there's going to be less coordination. Your goal is to take out boss Salmonids to receive and throw golden eggs at it to deal as much damage as possible, and even if you've used up your specials, you'll always be given just one for that extra wave. For number 32, if there's any period you can't find golden eggs to use on the King Salmonid, don't hesitate to keep shooting at it, but golden eggs should still be your priority. It's best to try and find a nice balance between the two to deal as much damage as possible throughout the entire extra wave. And finally, for number 33, if you land a Tenebrella shield a certain way on Salmonids, it will literally fucking fly to space. Nintendo, please fix this holy sh**. And with that, that is all 33 tips I thought I'd like to share, but if you have more tips I didn't mention, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Also, if you want to see some amazing competitive Samurai Run gameplay and tips, I also highly recommend checking out Brian's YouTube channel and the Overfishing Discord server. These guys are insane at collecting an absurd number of eggs, and there are tons of other things you could learn about through them. I do plan on making a part 2 for this in the future, after we see more content like Big Run, but anyways, thank you all for watching, and I hope you guys have a beautiful day. Peace.